Hello everyone and welcome to another collectible unboxing. Today we have the Hot Toys Doc Brown from the first Back to the Future movie. Now, <laughs> I just want to start and say if you guys are new here and expecting me to basically kiss ass the Hot Toys for making what looks like a subpar figure, uh, you know, simply leave. Uh, there's plenty of other channels that will kiss ass to Hot Toys and praise anything they release. Uh, and I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff, so that's not me. So, just a little background story of this figure and the whole Back to the Future line from Hot Toys. This was going to be my last bunch of Hot Toys in my collection, basically. As I've completely been disconnected with Hot Toys in the past three or so years. And, you know, simply because of... I don't really give a shit about their product anymore. The continued use of shit pleather and rubber materials also the lack of diverse properties has basically made me check out of their company but saying that being a massive fan of back to the future the whole trilogy seeing hot toys actually updating the new marty i was excited to grab this and the rest of the back to the future line to finish off my hot toy collecting on a high note and going from what i've seen with this i was wrong now for people that don't know hot toys have not only reused the sculpt for this figure they have done what i would call a scumbag move and changed the material of the plutonium box and i want to actually emphasize how big of a scumbag move this is because both hot toys and sideshow changed the description of the materials late last month on their websites so they purposely sneaked it in last month uh knowing most people will be unaware of it you know most collectors just order the figures and move on to the next one and you know just regarding to hot toy collectors i mean can you justify that and i mean how can you really excuse that uh I have pe heard people say that the cardboard is fine and it will hold up just like plastic and die cast. Uh, let's just say if it does hold up, I don't really think that's even the problem. You know, the problem is changing the materials secretly without telling the customers. And then also you got to take in consideration a bit of the hypocrisy from these people because I'll ask the question if, you know, the Hot Toys Star Wars, for example, if they change their lightsabers unannounced to cardboard would you still have that opinion uh if your marvel figure accessories were unannounced changed into cardboard materials would you as well say that because the answer is majority no you wouldn't accept that and that's pretty much the problem i have with hot toys the main reason i'm leaving is if it's not marvel or star wars they just simply don't care anymore uh at this point they should just rebrand to only doing Disney products because that's all they seem to really care about. The, the effort only goes into those figures these days. I mean, take a look at that dog shit Batman Begins figure they just sneak released. Four times they had to make that figure and this is their fourth attempt and it's the exact same remolds as all the other ones they've released, just like this dock. Uh, you know, if in our, in the future, Blitzway, Caustic Plastic or any other one six scale company dared to do this, you wouldn't hear the end of the scrutiny. But when Hot Toys do it, it's fine. Another example, they only took seven attempts to make a decent Dark Knight Batman. It's still inaccurate for the seventh, seventh attempt. But it's just passable until another company does it better. So yeah, maybe... If we're lucky, maybe another seven reissues, we will get a, a, a decent dock. So, aside from those big issues, let me just say the impact Back to the Future has had on me and why I'm so critical on this figure uh, so far. You know, it's the main reason that I became pretty much a movie buff or movie nerd. Uh, the trilogy is the reason I deep dive into movies and its fine details. And most film schools will use the scripts of this trilogy as an example of a perfect story. 
it's the main reason I actually studied film and media at school. Uh, and there's a reason these movies have stood the test of time because of its perfect story. So with this movie having the reputation of perfection, I find it kind of hilariously ironic that out of all the figures Hot Toys have done, this is the one they decide the half ass on. So, yeah. But whatever, that's that's pretty much it of my intro rant. Uh, I'm going to go straight into unboxing this now. Uh, and yeah, if you guys do enjoy this, make sure you like and sub. And we'll get to unboxing. So we we'll start off with the head sculpt, which is probably the more, more controversial part of this figure. Uh, I like the head sculpt, it's just not accurate to the first movie. Uh, I think everyone in the world already knows that this is from the part two, Back to the Future set. As you can see that Hot Toys again done another scumbag move and didn't fill these holes in. So here and here, which were, were the silver visors that went on top from the first, second movie, sorry. The expression's nice, the paint's decent, the hair's good, everything's good, it's just, this is part two, Doc, not part one, and I'll show Doc from the first movie, he has a lot more prosthetic makeup to make him look aged and old, he's got much more wrinkles compared to this, the hair as well, I think is a bit more wild in the scene that this movie figures based on compared to what we have here again this is more part two where he looked a bit more tamed with that and there's a seam line 
there's a seam line running all here too, so that's pretty shitty. Again, from someone like Hot Toys, you would, wouldn't expect this. I mean, first of all, you wouldn't even expect holes with no glasses to even pop on. But, yeah. The head sculpt's fine. Again, it's just inexcusable to reuse it, for one. And then, second of all, if you're going to reuse it, are you at least fix the other stuff or make the other stuff near 100%. But because you haven't done that, you've now left me to complain about everything, basically. I also want to add here, and I don't own the Back to the Future Part 2 uh, figures. I missed out on them. But what the hell is this? Why, why are Hot Toys using translucent neck pegs? Ha have Hot Toys ever done this before? Because that's a pretty scary thing to do for something that you're supposed to pop off and put back on. Like, for example, this out of the box came with the little plastic protector slip that you you have to take the head sculpt off to take that off. Or you can tear it. But why are you opting to use translucent pegs that peg on? You're just going to risk people getting this broken. Like, translucent plastic under pressure from a board joint is not the smartest idea from someone who are supposed to be the king of the hill of 1-6 scale figures. Very dumb decision on their part, doing that. But yeah, I mean, this looks like Doc, but again from part 2, not from the first movie. Uh, it would have been nice to have another expression as well. But, I mean, it looks fine. It's not terrible. Like, they got Christopher Lloyd's mole there, which is pretty accurate. It's nice, but again, it's from part two, not one. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do now is... I've actually put a big portion of the accessories on the suit itself. But the belt and some of the watches and other stuff I've kept loose. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through those accessories first that are loose handed and then go to the suit and talk about that. So we'll get into the accessories. So we've got the accessories here and there's a shitload to be honest, but I'll start with the positives and then dive into the negative. So one of the best accessories definitely stand out is the DeLorean remote control. So I'll go a little bit closer up here and I'll throw the screen used prop and this is fairly good. Uh, obviously, they've changed the brand name and I think there should be another uh, brand logo here. But again, I'm not fussed with that. I mean, they can't pay license for everything. It's nice that they put the 88 miles per hour. Uh, nothing moves, which I'm not really fussed with that. And you got the back here for the wiring. This is nice. Definitely something I was planning to use for my dock. And I'm happy that at least this is probably the most accurate out of everything here. So yeah. Uh, the antenna doesn't retract or detract. It's very thin. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty bendy. Uh, it's... It's thin, not bendy. Don't bend it. But, yeah, not too bad. Uh, the next thing here is the paper clip with the papers, which I'm not going to display. Uh, and I can't be bothered taking all this out. So, this is just a shiny plastic. And this is actual real paper. Uh, it's nice to have it. But I'm not going to display my dock with this. I'm going to display mostly with the control, the plutonium, and the belt. But it's nice to have added this in because obviously it's part of the scene. So now we're going to dive into the negatives, I guess. We'll start off with the hands. This is the only hands you get. Aside from the two relaxed gripping ones that are on the figure, you get these two. Uh, why exactly we didn't get more, I don't know. Actually, come to think of it, we get a plutonium box 
with no radiation glove hands. And actually, we don't even get the revolver that he uses at, in this scene. So Hot Toys have completely missed that just out of laziness, I guess. They decided not to sculpt brand new stuff for this figure. Uh, so we get no radiation gloves by the looks of it. Uh, speaking of radiation, we get the plutonium box here, which is the biggest disappointment. Uh, we get stickers like it's a Lego set, apparently. Apparently, we, we've gone back in time to 2008 Hot Toys, where we put stickers on premium quality accessories. I don't know. Put that shit there. This is probably the biggest disappointment. Uh, this is just hard cardboard. I don't even want to put pressure on this. I don't trust this at all. And the biggest disappointment is, yes, this is cardboard. They couldn't even be bothered doing real hinges. So it's just a shitty seam line that is going to constantly crease and probably break in the future if you keep opening it. Or even if you keep hold or keep it open. Like, I don't know how long this would stress-wise hold up. So it's on a dog shit peg system here. And... If you turn it around, you can see it's just going to get brittle after time. I mean, look at that. Like, it's already stressing out. So, premium hot toy collector here. Yeah, dog shit. In here is nice though. I really like this, the foam padding. And you can take one out. So, for people that are actually getting the car, the DeLorean, you can pop this in. Uh, of course, with no radiation gloves, so Doc's probably going to get some reaction holding this. Clearly, Hot Toys didn't see the scene of the film. But, yeah. Major disappointment with this. Because, again, they've done a shifty move and changed this at the last minute to hard cardboard. Actually, I don't even know what the stickers are for. You're supposed to throw the stickers on top of what is already on this. Like, these aren't stickers. Is this the throw on top? Because it's it's the radiation ones, because it says radioactive. And there's only four. So, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so you're supposed to throw them on top. I don't, I don't know what the point of that is. It looks good, but again, I didn't pay and pre-order for cardboard I wanted plastic and considering everything else here is for the most part plastic why couldn't you make this plastic anyway speaking of crappy materials we've got a shitty pleather belt with a shitty pleather tool belt uh, this is nice though this is the little like recorder that prints out what he says I'm pretty sure that is. And that's pretty accurate. So I'll throw the screen used one. This is pretty good. So no problems with this. And this is a nice fabric material, plastic little recorder that goes in. This part's nice. Uh, the belt is crap. Crappy pleather that's gonna rot. It's actually incorrect color and material as it's not even black and it's not even leather in the prop used screen use suit uh this is incorrect too the belt so i'll quickly throw out the screen used prop uh the, the hazmat suit uh and as you can see it's a different color leather or material different color belt as well so yeah not happy with this but it is what it is i guess and then we've got an array of tools, so you get spanners, torque wrenches, uh, rulers, files, pliers, different colors and sizes. You get a peg to put on the belt. Now, most of these, uh, you, you've probably over exceeded Hot Toys because most of these aren't even on the tool belt in the movie, and most of the accessories are yellow, not 
red and different colors. Most of them are yellow. So again, I'll throw the screen use suit with the tools in the belt. Most of the accessories are yellow. Uh, mostly this being biggest accessory you can visibly see, which is the bigger plier. It's yellow, not red. So again, I don't know who was looking uh, at the suits when making this figure, but there's some inaccuracies. And again, I would have let it, let this slide if you done 10 out of 10 with all this other stuff. So again, because you cheaped out on this, I'm going to be a bit of an asshole and start nitpicking everything. Because again, you've just been a bit lazy when it comes to this release. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw everything that needs to be on Doc himself. And we'll get into the tailoring and the suit itself. So this is pretty much Doc with all the belts and whistles and everything put on him. And overall, if I go like this. And get this out the way. This is perfect. Like this. Like I really, really like this, what's going on here. Uh, I still believe, and I'll throw him a bit more closer. I still believe there's a bit too much going on here. Uh, I don't think Doc's tool belt was this packed. I know he had the flashlight, a couple of the spanners and the pliers, but they were different colors. But whatever. Again, that's being extremely nitpicky. I don't like this material. I'm a bit scared of this pleather, and so is the belt. They're both pleather. I'm pretty scared of how they're going to turn out in the future. And what I was regarding up here is, like I said, I like the sculpt. I don't like the holes. But it's not the right sculpt for this movie. So what I'll do is I'll lay it down here. And just go up a touch. Now, what I was talking about is the stitch work actually on the suit here is inaccurate. So what I'll do is I'll have it like this. And I'll go and show the screen used one. The stitch work here is actually inaccurate. So like I said, I'll try and press this together. And I'll show you the screen used prop of the hazmat suit. It's a different pattern work. And a lot of people will be saying, well, that's a bit too extreme of a nitpick. But the reason this is all looking flappy and awkward is because it's incorrectly stitched. So you're not going to get this flush uh, collar like this. So again, I'll go back and show more uh, movie stills. You're not going to get a complete flush look and it's all puffy and weird here. It's because, again, that stitch work is supposed to help it be flush to the suit. Other than that, the suit is really nice. I actually like this texturing. A lot of people were seeing the early reviews and it looked too puffy and bloated. But for one, it's a, it's a hazmat suit. And two, they didn't tighten the belt enough. But the, the suit itself, texture is fine. It's the stitch and pattern work that's incorrect. Uh, also, I believe there was either Velcro or buttons here. And there's nothing here. It's just rolled up. I'm pretty sure there was something here. So again, I'll look at the screen use suit and show the photos. I'm pretty sure there was either a Velcro strap or a button here. So they've missed that. But overall, so I'll spin them around. You've got the radiation symbol there. Again, the suit's really, really nice. It's just a little bit inaccurate stitch work here. Uh, I think there's something missing here, like I said. Uh, but other than that, I mean... Complaints aside, I still think this is the same situation with the Pennywise where on face value to a regular person, they will look at these characters and go, oh, no shit, that's Doc from Back to the Future. No shit, that's Pennywise from It Chapter 2 or 1 or 
However, if you're that technical, you'll know the difference. But hardcore fans are going to look at this and say, well, this is inaccurate, this is inaccurate, this is inaccurate, and so forth. And I think that's the problem with Hot Toys, where the characters, they don't favoritize. They kind of rush, but then they pick and choose which ones they want to go more accurate. And unfortunately, this seems like the one that looks like it's rushed. So I'm up to part where I wanted to do a little showcase and pose him, but it's like I complimented the suit and the overall presence. Yes, it's not 100% accurate, but on face value to non-massive fans, it's passable. But then it's like I give you a compliment and then you go two steps backwards where you can't articulate this at all. He's got single arm joints. He's got double legs and I'm not going to pose him because I'm not, you know, I'm not going to really show that. I don't really do that a lot. He's in basically a fat suit, so he can't bend because he's got no double arms, but then the fat suit is even restricting that even more. And it's like, I wanted to get the pose and I'll show the reference now. I wanted to get the pose of him and Marty next to each other just when the DeLorean goes back in time. And... It's kind of the only expression that you can pass this one off. It's a different expression, but he's got a shocked face similar-ish to this. And you can't even do it because it's restricted with the fat suit, but you can't move the arms any more than this to get the controller more up to his chin. So it's like you go two steps forward and two steps backwards. So now I'm back to square one to where I'm back to giving this negative negative uh, review, I guess. Uh, and it's like, people were jumping, uh, ready to attack Tots Trick or Treat Studios for their 78 Myers for having single arm joints. Uh, and I think people forgot that that's their first figure that they've ever made. Uh, and since then, they have upgraded to double joints. So it's like, this is, what, MMS 610? So this is their 610 figure from Hot Toys. And they're downgrading from double joints to single. So where were the people that were attacking Tots for their first figure? Are they going to come and attack Hot Toys for this figure? Or uh, is their hypocrisy going to show or something? I don't know. But... Yeah, articulation's crap. Only single arm joints. This is, again, this is as far as you can go. Any more, you're going to snap them and break the peg. So it's like, do you have to body swap this to get at least some posability out of this? I don't know. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring Marty out and give my final thoughts. And obviously, uh, Einstein, which came with the additional stopwatch. So I'll bring them two out and we'll see how it goes. So we've basically got the whole crew here. We've got Marty, Doc, and little Einstein there. Overall, my final thoughts are, I think this is a bit of a disappointment in my opinion regarding the Doc Brown. Uh, it just shows how much lack of care I think Hot Toys have given with this lazy release. Uh, if you guys don't care about the property, sell it off to another company that will do these justice. Uh, I don't see why you should keep a monopoly hold on the license if you're just going to produce a lazy product. And honestly, this is why I'm leaving Collecting Hot Toys. Simply because they pick and choose what figures deserve good quality when everything should be made with the same good quality. Or at least show us you care. I mean, this line was going to be my last, the whole Back to the Future line. But now I'm skeptical of even getting the rest, which is part three. Or even if they release or re-release new part two figures. And you know, I was excited to finish my Hot Toys collection with my favorite trilogy, or one of my favorite trilogies, and move elsewhere. But this is a bit of a letdown. And, you know, this is coming from someone that's known of Hot Toys since 2008. Uh, just for a bit of a reference, I was 10 years old in 2008. 
uh, and I couldn't afford them back then, but people's excuse throughout the years is you should be grateful that this is the only Doc Brown on the market, so be thankful it's made. And in my opinion, I disagree with that statement where it's like uh, shit or lazy or even subpar products should be caught out and it's as simple as that. And I'll just end with this. If you accept mediocrity, that would just be the norm and it will continue to be that when we could get more than mediocre in my opinion. I mean, they did an update with the Marty. I think the Marty is fine. Doc, oh, sorry, not Doc, Einstein. Look, it's a dog. It's a one six scale dog. It's much better than the Ripley Jonesy that came with the Alien 79. I'll tell you that. Uh, me having Jonesy the cat, this is a bit of an upgrade from that. But yeah, and that's about it for today. You know, look, some have to be a bit brutally honest. And if it's going to be me, so be it. I'll take one for the team, I guess. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy this, make sure you like and sub. Also tell me, do you like the overall product of Doc? I would like to know that as well. I'd like to know if people do like this or if you are like me and dislike mostly the head sculpt holes and the plutonium box. I think if those two were rectified and fixed, I think the other little problems here would have been excused but if you guys generally do like the paper cardboard box and the holes well i don't know does someone actually like that i don't know but yeah that's pretty much it for today and i'll see you in the next one